The Flying Scots Donald and Douglas are two of the hardest working engines on the island of Sodor. They handle goods and passengers with ease and are happy to help on both the main and branch lines. The drivers refer to them as engines of all trades. There is one job, however, that the twins had yet to do. Gordon is most proud of the express. He runs his trains to time and the passengers sing his praises. Even so, he sometimes needs a rest. The fat controller decided it was time for him to have another. It didn't take long for Henry and James to begin boasting. Whoever will pull the express, I wonder? James smirked in the shed that night. I know one engine the fat controller will choose, Henry replied smugly. Oh, here we go, Donald muttered. No sleep for us tonight, chuckled Douglas. Ha, huh, snorted Henry. You're just jealous. You two are only goods engines. We're mixed traffic. Same as you, if you recall, Donald replied. Some of us are better suited for important trains than others, James sneered. That's why you two take trucks. We only take trucks because of the fuss you lot make about them, laughed Douglas. We treat the express like any other train. A job to be done, and done well. Very well said, Douglas, yawned Gordon. Now can we please quiet down and get some sleep? Henry and James huffed, but said no more. Those two could certainly do with having their wheels trimmed, Gordon grumbled to the twins next morning. Their boasting is maddening at times. Aye, chuckled Douglas, but there's not a thing to do for it. If you two took the express, Gordon replied, it would certainly knock some sense into them. If the fat controller asks us to, we will, smiled Donald. For now, we've got trucks to sort. The twins gave cheerful whistles and puffed off, leaving Gordon wondering how to give them their chance. Fortunately, he wouldn't have to do a thing. James and Henry were being ready for the day's work. Nearby, Donald and Douglas were shunting trucks for their morning trains. Ah, yes, James smirked. You won't see express engines shunting dirty trucks. Indeed, laughed Henry. It wouldn't do to look shabby for the passengers. Perhaps if Henry hadn't been so busy boasting, he would have noticed the points by the water tower weren't set properly. Too late, his wheels left the rails and his tender toppled over. No one was hurt, but James was trapped in his siding. You did that on purpose to stop me getting the express, James snapped. On purpose? You shouldn't have been distracting me, fumed Henry. When the fat controller arrived, Henry and James wisely stopped arguing. You have caused a great deal of trouble, he fumed. You can stay there until we get the train sorted out. Perhaps it will teach you not to get so big in the smoke box. Henry and James looked shamefully at their buffers. I'm sorry, Gordon, said the fat controller, but you may have to pull the express again before your rest. If I may, sir, smiled Gordon, why not let Donald and Douglas take the express? I'm sure Edward, Duck, and I can handle the other work. Duck and Edward were quick to agree, and the fat controller pondered. Well, you too, he said, turning to the twins. What do you say? We'd, We'd be, be honored, honored, sir, the twins beamed. And so it was arranged. 
The twins were gentle with the coaches, gave the passengers a smooth ride, and charged over Gordon's Hill. They had no trouble keeping to time. In fact, they were often early. Gordon sang their praises when he saw them return. You two look splendid flying along the line. I dare say we ought to call you the Flying Scots. I'm sure my dear brother would agree if he could see you. All in a day's work, smiled Donald. I suppose, chuckled Douglas, some of us are better suited for important trains. James and Henry, who were both stuck on goods work, said nothing at all. <laughs>